I'm asked the question, what's the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian really, really frequently. Um, and so what I do is I usually refer to uh, this document here, which everyone can go and have a look on the British Dietetic Association website that um, helps to translate the difference between the two professions. Um, registered dietitians are the only qualified um, health professionals that assess, diagnose and treat um, dietary and nutritional problems in individuals, but also in a wider public health, so to populations as well. And so they work with both healthy people and sick people as well. So what dietetics offers you, in addition to nutrition, is really the ability to be able to do one-to-one -one dietary counselling um, with, um, with, with, um, with people who are unwell. So here is the structure of our degree programme. So um, you can do either the postgraduate diploma in dietetics or the MSc in dietetics. Both of them, at the end of that degree, you do your final exams and you've done all of your placements and you are eligible to uh, register with the Health and Care Profes Professions Council and practice as a dietitian. Um, the only difference between the two um, courses is that the MSc in Dietetics has a research project at the end of it. Um, so the postgraduate diploma runs from September 2000 and, well, in 2016 it went to 2018, so it's a, a, it's a basically 17 month long, and the MSc is 21 months long. So you, all you do is an extra four months after that, so you do, um, so you do a, a project at the end, end of that. To be eligible to apply for this course, you need to have already a BSc in nutrition um, with either a first or a 2-1 or an MSc in nutrition um, with a distinction or a merit. Um, and so um, those are the entry requirements. I'm really sorry, that slide is out of date. It was the one from last year. Um, it says there that only students who are eligible for home or EU fee status are, are eligible. That is still the case for the coming year, um, but uh, we will be revising that given the change in uh, current um, uh, funding structures um, from the UK government. Um, so the, um, the dates there are incorrect. It should be from September 2018 to February 2020 and the similar for the MSc. So apologies for that. So here is the structure of the MSc and the postgraduate diploma. And so you will see that the postgraduate diploma is 120 credits. Um, and you will do diet therapy, which is a really, really large um, um, 30 module, um, 30 credit module. And there you will study um, all aspects of acute and chronic disease management. So for example, you will study how you give oral nutritional support to a patient who's undernourished. You will study how to deliver enteral nutrition through a tube um, and prescribe that to a patient. You'll learn about the dietetic management of different disorders of the gut or of diabetes um, and obesity and how you um, encourage people to manage them on their own. You will also do a 15 credit module in communication. Um, you can be the greatest scientist in the world um, who knows everything about nutrition, but if you can't communicate that to an individual, you will not be successful at doing your job. And so you will learn communication skills, and clearly to be a dietitian, you need to have good communication skills already, but we will also teach you these. And we will do a variety of different practice-based teaching where you will get to practice teaching a, a pretend patient. And in fact, some of the assessments for that will be us observing you counsel a um, patient um, and so, um, so that will be incorporated into your assessment. You will also do a module in advanced diet therapy and that's where we look at the dietary management of complex disorders. So somebody who for example is on an intensive care unit and where they're having renal support and, and breathing support and how you deliver nutrition to somebody who can't eat. Um, for example, how you um, nutritionally manage somebody who has burns all over their body. How you manage um, children with complex metabolic disorders like phenylketonuria. How, how a dietitian would be the only person who led the management of that child's disease. Public health is an enormously important area of study for dietetics. Of the 69 million people in the UK, we know that two thirds of them are overweight. The way to manage that is not by a dietitian sitting down and giving each single one of them dietary counselling. It would take between now and forevermore for that to happen. So what dietitians need to do is to be able to work on 
using public health approaches, working with local government, working with policy makers to be able to change those things so that the foods that we have access to are better. You will also study a module in professional practice, which is a module that um, uh, teaches you about the professional behaviours required of a health professional. Um, because this is not a standard science course, you will have the privilege of walking into a hospital and giving people dietary counselling, looking at their medical notes, asking them about very, very personal information. Um, and um, with that um, duty comes an awful lot of responsibility. So you will learn about team working, about confidentiality and about autonomy um, and truth telling in order to maximise your professionalism. You will learn about principles of clinical science and therapeutics. That's a, effectively a short course in medicine so that when you open these medical notes on a ward, you understand the terms that are written in there, you understand the drugs that the patients are on and therefore you can apply the, um, your, the evidence that you know in order to make that patient better. You will also study food service and catering. So uh, within, the, within the trust, within the hospital just here, 900 patients receive three meals a day. And can you imagine the enormous task that that, that, that involves? And clearly one way to improve the health of the hospital population is to change the food that's being served there. And the same for um, schools, the same for residential care, um, and the same for any institutional food delivery. Um, and then finally, if you choose to go and do an extra 60 credits for your MSc, you will do a research project at the end of that, which Dr. Corp has already talked about. You will do three clinical placements as part of your time here, um, and they will be largely in South or West London. Therefore, all of those placements are full-time, and they will involve a mixture of primary care, i.e. working in the community, secondary care, working in a hospital, or working in a public health um, environment. Um, one thing I can have to say is that we can't guarantee you'll get a placement. That doesn't happen usually, um, but um, we can't guarantee it, nor the type of placement, so we can't guarantee you'll always get the, the placement in the, right, in the place that you um, wanted, nor the location. So you, you, you must be prepared to travel all over South West London to be able to go on your placement. Um, and then a couple of things in wrapping up that I want to say is that this, um, both the postgraduate diploma in dietetics and the MSc in dietetics are enormously busy. Um, you'll be in college every single day of the week um, and um, not necessarily nine to five, but your lectures might be 10 till 12 and then, and then two till four or something. Um, and so you'll be very busy. The degree, the placements are full time nine to five. And so there is little time during this degree for a, a long holiday, for example, or, and there's very little time for um, em employed work. Those students definitely do do employed work but they have to fit that round um, their college studies. Um, these are guidance on health and character um, that because you will be becoming a registered health professional at this um, we have a requirement um, to ensure that you are of a good character and also that your health will not harm a patient and nor that a patient's health might harm you. So if you have um, a condition or a disease that might put your performance as a dietitian at risk, um, then you, you will have a requirement to tell the university or the placement provider um, about that. Uh, don't, you don't need to do it in your application form or anything like that. I'm just obliged to tell you that before we can let you onto a course, we need to um, make sure that we're caring for your needs as well as those uh, of patients. Um, and that um, we need to ensure good character of people applying to our course, and so um, we need to require that you do a disclosure and barring form before you're allowed onto the course. Thank you very much.